back to Rachel's Enchanting Kate. We're finally here with another tutorial. Now, what I'm going to show you is really, really simple. It's one of the main things you need with cake decorating. And it's just to cover a cake with fondant rather than take through it step by step. So I've got my coloured fondant here. There's another tutorial on YouTube to show you how to do that. These little guys are called spacers. They bang on five millimetres thick. And it's so when you cover your cake and you're rolling your fondant in between them, it's going to be really, really even. I like to use two rolling pins. Obviously, the smaller ones just to get it started. And then once it starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, I move to the much larger rolling pin. These are smoothers. These are to smooth your cake when we're actually putting on the icing. You can use, um, when you're cutting the icing off the edge, a... Uh, pizza cutter but I like to use a knife. I find with the pizza cutter I can be a bit clumsy sometimes and sometimes just nudge the edges. And finally obviously icing sugar. Some people prefer corn flour. I'm an icing sugar kind of gal. You use what's comfortable for you. Right so let's start. The cake's in the fridge guys if you're wondering where it is. I do have another blog on my website. I'll put a link on the page so that you can see it which will explain to you how to get the cake lovely. So, what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to knead my fondant or sugar paste. Some people call it fondant, some people call it sugar paste. Plenty of rice and sugar down so it doesn't stick. We're making it nice and warm so it's pliable. I'm covering an eight inch round cake. It's 10 centimeters deep. And on average, you need about 900 gram of fondant. That's for an eight inch cake. Okay. So just keep on kneading it, just until it's nice and pliable. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. We all have our own little methods. So you'll notice in the kitchen, especially if you're a new baby, you'll develop it over time. We all do things differently, it's each to their own. Nothing's wrong and nothing's right. If you notice what I'm doing with my hand, I'm just rounding it out a little bit. This is a secret, partly when you're covering a cake. If your cake's round, when you're rolling the fondant out, keep the fondant round. If your cake's square, keep the fondant square. Starting off with my small rolling pin. Keep on picking it up and turning it around. Making sure there's icing sugar underneath so it doesn't stick. Okay, I'm going to put a bit more down now. It's not too thin at this point so you'll find you'll be able to still pick it up. I'm doing this with my hands just to try and keep it round. There we go. Pick it up again. It's as simple as that. But keep on moving it and it'll avoid it sticking to your work surface. Now obviously it's much harder to cover a large cake and further down the line I will be showing you how some little tips. You need a much better rolling pin. And you can't always get it to the right thickness when you're covering it. It's really, really large cake. I think the biggest one I've ever done was a 16 inch square. Well, you won't even fit a 16 inch cake in your oven. It was absolutely ginormous. Okay. Now it's starting to get slightly bigger than the rolling pin. I'm gonna switch rolling pins. You don't need to have two rolling pins to do this. I worked with one for ages. But you'll find with all your cake decorating equipment, the longer you do it, the more you have and the more little tools you have, the easier the baking is and the decorating. So it is worth over time investing in them. I know the tools aren't cheap, they're far from cheap, but like I said, to create the best case, yeah, keep on right, keeping it nice and round 
You won't think so much effort just went into just covering a cake. But this is this needs to be perfect. This is your blank canvas, which you're going to be decorating. And you want to be using the best ingredients. Also, on my blogs, you'll also find the tips behind baking that perfect cake. Because, in all honesty, it's not just about having a beautifully decorated cake. It's got to taste just as good as it looks. Especially if you're selling them, more so if you're selling them. High quality, good ingredients, it's worth the money. I'm really happy with that. I've kept it as round as I can. It's not sticking to the board. I'm going to go over it one more time. That way. It's lovely and pliable. I'm doing it bang between the spaces that means it's going to be exactly five millimeters thick now that is ready to go on my cake so on my blog on my website it will teach you how to stack the cake how to fill the cake and what you can see on the outside is called crumb coating so when I put this fondant on the cake I'm not going to get any crumbs into the fondant in case it goes wrong which it might do if you're not used to doing it and it gives the fondant something to stick to. So, how do you get your fondant onto your cake? Oh, when I was a hobby baker, I was doing everything wrong, trust me. This is the easiest way to do it. You pick up your lovely rolling pin and fold it over, as simple as that. Now the secret to this is to be one with the fondant. Don't be scared of it. I've placed it on a turntable, which means I can work with it whilst I'm using it. And now you have to negotiate the pleats. So I like to keep on rubbing mine. Make sure I stick it down. Do your best to get rid of any air bubbles. If you leave any air bubbles in there, as the fondant starts to dry, it will bulge out and look horrid. So you do have to keep an eye on them sometimes, especially depending on the weather and the humidity. There is a way you can get rid of them though. So as you can see, I'm just... When I first did this, it took me about an hour just to cover a cake. No word of a lie. And it looked absolutely shocking. So if just by watching this YouTube video, if it encourages you just to give it a try. Everybody, I believe, can bake a cake. As long as you've got enough patience and you put your mind to it. You know, there's a lot of moms out there that may want to give it a try. That may be a little bit more difficult when you've got little ones running around. But, no, go for it. You might notice this has got a little bit of a sheen and that's because it's quite warm in this kitchen. Sugar can be shocking to work with when it gets very, very humid, but I'm not going to worry because I can easily cover it with icing sugar because it will affect it when I start using my smoothers. They'll stick a little. So I've got a few more pleats just down here. I'll face it towards the camera so you can see a bit better. And I'm using my fingers, you'll notice an awful lot. Don't worry, the fondant's not going to set on you straight away. Now that, I am really happy. Right, I'm not going to cut off the fondant yet. This is where this smooth, I don't know if you can see it, this is a smooth-sided smoother, if you like. Whereas that one's slightly different. With this one, if you watch, I'm able to push straight down. Now this is my method for doing it. Everybody else might do it differently. But like I said, in cake decorating, there's no wrong, there's no right. You do whatever method suits you better. So I'm just pushing down. Right. I haven't smoothed anything yet and it already looks like a beautiful cake. So with my knife, I'm just going to trim off the excess like so. 
Take your time with everything. If you're really, really nervous and unsure whether or not you'll be able to do it, the best investment you can get is a cake for me. Right, because of the humidity again, I don't know if you've noticed, but the sides are going sticky. I'm just going to put some more icing sugar on. That means now we can get to making this cake nice and neat. If I just move my tools out of the way. These turntables are a fantastic investment as well. As you can see, they make doing your work so much easier. Now this is to get rid of all those finger marks, smooth out all the edges. That's why I'm just using this one to hold the cake and this one to smooth. That's got a little bit stick it, so a bit more icing sugar. You might find you have this problem as well when you're working with black. It's quite warm and sticky in here today, so that's why we're struggling in here. But if you're using colours like black and red, oh, yeah, especially if it is on a hot, humid, sticky day. So just use the icing sugar. Make it nice and smooth. And that I'm really happy with. Now what I do, because I like to get mine straight into the centre, I don't know if you can see this ring here. I've just used the base of my 8 inch pan, placed it onto my fondant and then used a knife and gone round it. This is just so I know where to put my cake, so it'll be central, it'll be spot on. So I'm going to take this off my turntable. Put this one on now. This one I want to be locked in place for a while. Now there's a little lock on your turntable to stop it from moving. There we go. And this is how I transfer it. The reason I like to transfer it whilst the fondant is still soft is because it's not going to go on perfect. The buttercream would have been best off in the fridge for a bit longer. Where it means we can then smooth it on here. This has been left for a while, so this is nice and hard. It's all nice and set with the air, so we're not going to damage that fondant, even though we're going to use smoothers. So if I drag this off, I used to get really nervous at this point. But over time, you just get used to it. And carefully place it off and drop. I'm going to unlock this first. It was locked so that we could add the cake on. It doesn't need to be now. You see how this isn't affecting this fondant? It's because it's lovely and set, and that's how the fondant on your cake will end up as well. So I'm really, really happy with this. And then what I do, because obviously in this, it's quite warm in this kitchen today, the heating's on, I would put this back in the fridge for maybe 30, 45 minutes, just so that buttercream can go nice and hard. The fondant on the outside will start to crust over and you're going to avoid any bulging at the sides if you've ever had that problem. And then you've got all your decoration to go on as well just afterwards. That's it. So that is how to create your lovely blank canvas. So this is now going to go in the fridge and now you should get baking and start covering your own. Have fun!